Bandwidth for this podcast is brought to you by CashFly at C-A-C-H-E-F-L-Y dot com. Welcome back to Mac Break Studio. We're here in the studio with, uh, of course, myself and Mark, and we're going over the new features of Final Cut 10.1, uh, editorial and keyframing effects and library and audio and just a lot of stuff. A lot of stuff. There's a lot like, of stuff. We wrote an article on it, and we yeah. had tons of movies on the internet yeah. about it, yeah. and we have an in-depth tutorial, but we there's feel like more. it's a really, yeah, there's still more to talk about. <laughs> that was a long intro, yeah. wasn't it? That's great. Okay. It's great. So um, so you mentioned keyframes. That's what mm -hmm. I want to talk about. Okay. okay. And so there are a few little adjustments and improvements to how keyframes work in Final Cut 10. And it's one of those things where you're like, oh, finally. Or it's like, now it's going to make something really easy. So check this out. I have a very simple project here that um, without even playing, you can tell that we've got some interview footage. We've got some B-roll cutaways. And we've got an, a song audio track. One of the things I love about Final Cut is you can just look at this and immediately tell what's going on without even playing it. That's right. Right? You just really get a sense of what it's about. So I'll play a little bit of it at first just so you can see what's going on here. Seeing things from the sky takes a whole different perspective than when you're on the ground. And that's what's so unique and really so spiritual about flying. By the way, um, I... I created this video, it's up on Vimeo now, and yes. I have a different song, but I actually kind of like this song. It's, it's nice. kind of pretty, yeah. yeah. It's, yeah it's nice. So I just threw it in there, but the, here's the deal. It's obviously, we want to, we want the audio, we want to duck, duck the audio, we want to bring it, it down while he's talking and bring it up when we're looking at the beautiful shots that he's talking about. And Steve has already done earlier a Mac Break Studio episode on the range tool, but I'm going to hit R for the range tool, so I won't go into great depth, but a little before, and I like to stop a little before the end, so the audio starts, the music starts to swell a little bit just when he's finishing talking, just right. as a little indication that, hey, something's about to change. So by using the range tool, R select the range tool, I'm going to drag the audio down. I'm going to be kind of rough here. I'm not going to really worry about being perfect. Um, we automatically get keyframes. So if I play it now. Seeing things from the sky takes a whole different perspective than when you're on the ground. And that's what's so unique and really so spiritual about flying. Okay. So um, nothing new there, but here's the cool thing. Let's say that we made a change. Let's say, for instance, hey, we start hearing him here, but we don't see him for a long time. I'd really like to see him a little sooner. So what I'm going to do is just uh, hit A, get back my select tool, and trim out this gap clip to create more, sp uh, more space, space there. So now, now we're going to uh, come to him sooner, okay? But your keyframes aren't lining yeah, up. Yeah, they're anymore. not lining up. And what you've had to do before 10.1 is to select each, each one, one and, and drag it left oh and right. Gosh. And then you kind of yeah. ruin the timing of the fades, mm -hmm. and it's just a mess. So check this out. Now I'm going to show you two different things. One thing is if I select one keyframe and hold the shift key down, I can select multiple keyframes. Okay, you couldn't do that before. Or can you just like shift? Wait, don't, don't give it away. That's the cool thing. What, mm -hmm. were, you, what were you going to say? Well, see, you were. You were doing like command clicking on like each one. Shift clicking. I was shift clicking each one. But could okay. I, I didn't want to steal your thunder. But okay. Can't you click the first one and shift click the end one and then have them all selected between? I don't. Mean? I don't think so. I'll try that. I actually never tried that. <gasps> that's <laughs> nice. <laughs> nice. <laughs> that's nice. Okay. There's even a better way. Okay. But I like okay. that a lot. I like right. that way. So let's, let's do a review. I was shift clicking each one, but you could just select one, shift click the last one, and select them all. Yep. And now you can drag them over and put them where you want. Uh, okay. okay. So that's cool. Another thing you can do is uh, if you select the range tool, R, check this out. Now, if I drag a range around, uh, it selects them. It's very tactile. Yeah. You can just drag a range around and select them. And now I can move those uh, wherever I want. Or I could drag a range just around these two. And just move those and two. And just maybe they were a little nice. cut. Yeah. So super easy way to adjust your keyframes. So that's one thing. Another thing is that you can now copy and paste keyframes. Nice. Okay, so I'll, uh, I'll use your technique. I thought it was kind of interesting. I'll select one, shift click the last one, or the range tool, doesn't matter. And then actually, actually go back. I like to make sure we're sitting with the select tool because that screws me mm -hmm. up. So check this out. Under the edit menu, there's a whole new keyframes sub menu. Sub menu. Sub menu, yeah. With some kind of funky, you know, option shift, X, uh, mm -hmm. C, and Y. But here's the deal. Let's say we found the perfect level to duck this audio, minus 15. If we were to go and manually do the next one by using the range tool, we'd have to like, wait a minute, what do we you drag the You could be around? off by a decibel or yeah, whatever. Yeah, you just have to kind of think about it more. But here's another option. Um, command C to copy. Uh, no, let's go back to the menu because I haven't memorized these yet. Um, uh, copy. Option Shift C. Mm -hmm. And I'll move over to this guy a little before it. Uh, edit, keyframes, and paste. Option Shift V. 
You have to select oh, the track. Oh, I, you have to select the track. Thank you. Keyframes, Option Shift V or Paste. There you go. And there they go. Now, of course, we've got these two, but R for the range tool and just move them over. Uh, so you do need to do a little adjustment, but the audio level is already set. And you just saved yourself from having all this option yeah. clicking to create all those keyframes. Or, yeah, yeah, or, or selecting your range is just it's done. Just, so yeah. I find this much faster. If you've got to duck a lot of audio, I, I love this way. Now, of course, you could go and just drag ranges on all of them and you know, drag but, them to multiple What I've ranges. discovered, if you have a bunch of interview clips, like let's yeah. say there's two here, but let's say you have like 10. Yeah. You can get the first two or three done and then range select all of them. So you're selecting, in this case, you're selecting uh, like... Um, so, so just 12 like of them. Uh -huh. And then you're pasting 12 keyframes with the levels. Uh, so the okay. more the okay. more keyframes yeah. you get in, the more you can paste to yes. save you even yes. less time. What I thought you were going to say is, you know, you can select a range here, and mm -hmm. then uh, can you select multiple ranges like that? No, you no. can't. Okay. What I'm saying is you can select okay. all eight of those yes. keyframes. copy paste all of them yes. and have a bunch. Got it. So anyway, just a cool, the ability to copy key copy paste keyframes, the ability to select multiple ones at the same time, mm -hmm. movement's fantastic. Mm -hmm. It works on video too, but a little bit differently. So earlier you've done an episode where you worked with this guy, with Range this clip tool, here, yeah. and you put on a, a, a filter, you put on an effect, I should say. So let's shift C to fit to window, we've got this clip here, and I'm gonna look up, you did one with heat, I remember. Yep. There it is, so I think you did this one here, mm -hmm. heat. Yeah. So I'm gonna apply this here, and um, just kind of get a little wavy effect there. And what I'm gonna do is Control V to, to review the animation for this. I gotta go back to the Select tool. Yeah. And uh, there we see it, I'm gonna open it up and then we can see the amount, so we can adjust the amount. But let's say we want that amount to change over time. And this is something you did earlier. We actually took the range tool, R, and drew a range out in right. here mm -hmm. and then lowered it just kind of when he was across the sun. Actually okay? increased it. Increased it? Okay, increase it. You yeah. increased it. Okay. Yeah. And so this is not new, right? This is something you've been able to do prior sure. to 10.1. Absolutely. But now you can move those clips easily. Keyframes. Uh, sorry, move those keyframes. Thank you. So once again, with the range tool selected, I'm You're driving a range, just drawing a range, across. and they're all selected. And now I can move those <gasps> in time. What? What? Yeah. What? That's awesome. Yeah. So it's very good to be able to move them around. And of course, I could also copy paste them. Uh, within the same clip, so for instance, I'll copy paste within the same clip. Whoops. You just pasted a new clip. I know, I did, I did. Um, range, and I used, you know why? I'm so used to Command C, Command V, that that's what I did. I didn't use edit keyframes, I didn't use these new copy. Option shift C. Right, and then if I go over here, edit keyframes, paste, Let's see if that'll work there. Yep. There we go, so yep. they're, they're added on there. I'm gonna undo that, but see, you can paste them within the same thing. Yep. Of course, if you're pasting to other clips, you could do paste attributes and you would get all those keyframes as well. But really cool feature to be able to select multiple keyframes, to be able to copy paste keyframes, to be able to move them all at the move same them, time. Copy them, paste yeah. them, cut them. Super helpful. Super helpful. Yeah. Well, excellent. So there you have it, working with the new keyframe features in Final Cut 10.1. Um, check more, check our stuff out at rippletraining.com. We have great tutorials up there for beginners and for more advanced users. Check us out on Twitter, at Ripple Training, on Facebook, and uh, you can also email us. And thank you, Mark, for showing us this excellent tip. And uh, we'll look forward to seeing you on the next MacBreak Studio. Thanks for watching.